Nokia might do from to now. Um, you then have to find a way of cross-subsidizing and taking some of the money off the autistic children in order to give enough children, uh, sorry, enough money for the PMLD children. That is the way it has to work. And the reason I'm saying cross-subsidy in that direction is that children with life-threatening conditions have to have the support because otherwise um, there could be a catastrophe. So therefore, you have to do that. Now, is that fair and reasonable? I, I would suggest that we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to say, this is how much, when we invite the schools forum to um, discuss these things, the information they get is obviously from this council, because this is where the expertise is. They rely on council officers to give them the information. That information should have been available to the schools forum. It should have been spelled out, this is what you're actually doing. Because once, and the reason I uh, asked my colleagues for the call in on both of these is the funding actually drives the system. And that's why I did it. But, but, yes, I know, Chair, I entirely agree with you, but I would point out that was the total focus of what the officers were talking about, and I'm trying to sum up. I think I've done my best, Chair, up to now. Um, so, what I'm saying, Chair, is this. We have to first listen to the reality of the daily lives of these children. The daily lives in school, the family life, and so on. We've heard that very eloquently. I don't need to repeat it because I don't know, and they do. I see them in school, I don't have to look after them. Then we say, how much per child does that cost? It's not difficult, it can be done within quite, um, quite rigorous limits. And then we say, where does the money come from? And it isn't about foreign roles. It's a, it isn't about national formula, because the formula would be made by us in world. It's about us understanding the children, understanding their needs, and finding a way of paying for it. That is the reason I'm asking for a call in, because this paper does not cover those issues. And if we're going to consultation, we need a paper that covers these issues, so that all of our people in the world can actually respond and understand. That is our duty as a local education authority. That is our duty under equalities and diversity. And I'm asking my colleagues here to actually say, yes, this must in some way be done. Thank you, Chair. Hey, I just didn't say on my cut sheet here, but I, I think it's fair to ask any of the members if they do want to ask you a direct question, Tom. Uh, I, I'll, I'll start one off because prior to this debate, sorry, into the next debate, I'll leave that one out and straight in again. Okay, I'll, I'll uh, I have Pat's hand up initially. Anybody else? No? Okay. Um, I've listened very carefully to what you've just said, um, and I'm sure I'm not alone, particularly here, in thinking that um, I would quite happily give any amount of money to help these parents and their children. And, uh, but I genuinely don't think that is the issue we should be talking about tonight at this calling. I think at this calling, we should be talking about whether asking for a consultation is a reasonable route to take. And um, my question to you, Tom, is what part of, uh, I want to draw your attention to page 155 and section four, other options considered. Four point one. At yeah. this point, the closure of the school appears the most viable option. Appears the most viable option, although this is the start of a lengthy consultation with parents, staff, and stakeholders, which will consider all available options in the best interest of the children. And I don't understand why you don't think, as an, an elected member and um, part of this process as well as a visitor to the school that that would include all of the issues you just told us now at this point. Because this is going to be based inevitably upon this paper. And this paper is inadequate for the reasons that I've said. Um, I think that parents expect a paper that is comprehensive and is based upon the needs of their children at the beginning. 
This paper is quite explicitly based upon finance, just as the other one of the finance paper is reasonably. And that is the reason for the lack of trust, because people should see, first of all, and if you look at this motion in 2011, it's uh, the best means of education for children. That has not been covered by what Julia and this did with it, whatever it was, 11 different headings. That is the key to it. What people want and what we should be doing, and this is what the whole business is about, what is the best means of educating these children, and we can discuss that, but that's the starting point, whether you maintain a school or not. Uh, no, but I do have to. I just uh, okay. Uh, no, no, it's a look. Pat, I think my contribution may be helpful in as much as we are dealing with facts, and I don't want the audience there to believe Tom's version uh, of what the recommendation is. The second recommendation of the cabinet does allow for a new document in terms of um, consultation, and it reads that the Director of Children's Services, or her nominee, be authorised to compile and produce the appropriate consultation documentation and proceed with the consultation exercise as soon as practically possible. I would suggest that all the evidence and every contribution that's been made here tonight would influence the production of any document, whatever decision we make, and future thinking, because this, to me, has not just been about evidence gathering, it's also been about people getting their points across uh, in a whole range, and that will come more in debate. So, so it's not fair to say that this will be the final consultation document because it allows the officer to compile a, 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 a consultation document. It, you might think it's a new point, but it, technically, that's what the recommendation says. Is that a question? <laughs> um, I was hoping to to actually just get the factual information. Yeah, well, I think the distinction is rather a nice one, Chair, but as they say, we are where we are, and we were dealing with what, in my opinion, is an adequate paper, and until it's a challenge, we're never going to get an adequate paper, because what we should actually be doing is suggested by council policy, um, which we all supported, those who was on the council at that time, and that is to look at the best means of, of educating these children. Now, I feel that that is what should actually be done, and we should not be looking at this roundabout way of saying, let's choose something and consult on that. The key question is, what is the best way of educating these children? And then we arrange it as a community to educate the children. It is going to be expensive, that is life. Wherever those children are, it will be expensive. And it hasn't been mentioned tonight, and so for being at this stage, but there are some parents who appealed, say, to go to the Royal School for the Blind in Liverpool. That costs a great deal more per child than anything we would be considering, I can tell you that much. So I think it is time that we looked at the basics, and my fear is that we get another paper that's based upon inadequate amount, uh, information on finance and so on, and not on children. Now, I don't want to argue with you, Chair. You're entitled to your point of view. I accept that absolutely entirely. I thank you for your courtesy and cooperation and helpfulness in me presenting this case, but that is my viewpoint. Can I thank you, Tom, for your obvious, obvious passion and your long, long service to the Flinders School? <laughs> Moving to um, the cabinet members' response, Tony, Councillor Tony Smith, and then after that, again, he's available for questions. We we'll have a, a debate, and then we will try and make a decision. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, first of all, I, I'd like to say how grateful I am to all the parents who have come along and uh, made a contribution tonight. Um, I think it's very important to hear their stories yeah, about their children and uh, the, the, the way they work with them and that. Um, I know that, um, as I said in my opening statement, it is a, a very difficult uh, uh, period, this. I hope that um, some of the questions have been, at least some of them, we've attempted to answer them, the officers have tried to uh, 
um, give, give more information about him and that. I mean, I'll, I'll be very honest about it. You know, I'm passionate about children with special educational needs, and I know how important it is that we get the right setting for the children and we get the right placements and that. When I took over this position in, in June 2013, first thing I noticed was the, the, the amount of work that had gone on in regard to our special schools and that, and in particular in regard to Lindale, the number of times that uh, the uncertainty that was, that was there for so long. And uh, obviously I had to take an overview of what was happening in, uh, in all our schools with complex learning difficulties. And having sort of seen it in other uh, local education authorities, I was really so pleased to see how wonderful our schools are whether it's Lindale, Ellery Park, Stanley, you know, the three primary schools are outstanding, are good with outstanding teachers. That's not the case in, in, in lots of local authorities. So, you know, we have wonderful staff in all the schools. Uh, we have wonderful parents who support their children in those schools. So, you know, it, we, we, we have a good sense of what special education needs are, are, are about in this authority. And I know all elected members feel exactly the same way. Certainly the questions that I get asked on it on numerous occasions is, you know, have we got it right for children with special educational needs? And I say, no, we haven't got it right. We're learning all the time. Good or outstanding, we've got to ensure that happens all the time. Now, during the last couple of years, we've managed to build a new school for children with, 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 with learning difficulties, it's, uh, besides Pensby Primary School, standing relocated there. And hopefully in the next 12 months, we'll have a, a new school for children with special education needs, Foxfield, transferring to a new bill uh, beside Woodchurch High School. I'm very proud of that. As, as, as Chair of Governance of Woodchurch, I've really pushed that because I believe that you know we have schools for children with, 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 with our mainstream children. We should also have the best for our children with special educational needs. Now, getting on to the the, 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 the case in regard to to, to, to Lindale, I mean I, I don't want to go over sort of old ground or anything like that. I mean the the numbers have been decreasing over the last six to eight years. I have checked out to see whether parents have been given wrong advice and that. But from what I can see, as someone who understands a little about the special education needs procedures, we do have booklets. All education authorities have booklets saying these are the kinds of schools that are available for children with compound learning difficulties and that. And parents have the right to go and look in those schools, talk to the, the head teacher, and the parents then talk to the professionals. And if, 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 if the parents want that school, my understanding is they can choose that school. So as far as I can see, looking at what has happened over, over the years, I don't think officers have directed parents to any particular school. As I said earlier, we've got excellent schools, so parents can have great difficulty trying to choose which school. You know, it, it is very, very difficult at, at, at times. Now, I don't know why the numbers have remained low at, 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 at Lindale, but I can only say the other two schools, certainly the numbers, as the director has said, has increased uh, quite rapidly in that. We also have brought in, as, as, as our director said, um, the um, HMI to look at the, the um, at how we um, look after children with profound and multiple learning difficulties. And we do rely on ex experts coming in and giving its staff advice. And I I'm conscious of that when I look at, at uh, the, 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 the direction that, that, that we are going. I honestly want to say, as I said in my opening statement, that the, this is a, um, a, a um, Open. I know people might say it's not. It's an open and transparent, transparent consultation that we're asking for. I want to do away with the uncertainties that have persisted for the last six to eight years. I want everyone to make their contribution to this con 
consultation if it goes ahead. It's very important for the future of special educational needs in, 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 in the borough. You know, so I, I, I understand the emotional side for parents very, very much because it's very, very difficult to, um, to sort of move away from something that you know very well. I honestly, I can honestly say I haven't got a fixed opinion on what is right in, in, in this situation. I want to hear what all the, all the stakeholders, all the people who could contribute in any way to the, 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 this consultation have to say. And when we've got those contributions, I want to come back and uh, ensure that the officers look at all the options that are available, all the options and even ones that haven't been considered before. But people come in with new options, as I say, and quite willing, I think we should be quite willing to look at those. So it is very open. I can honestly say that. I have, I'm not coming with any predetermined sort of, well, we've got to close Lynn there, or we've got to do this. I want to go out and have this full consultation and ensure that whatever happens, that we get it right this time. Are there, sorry, thank you, Tony. Are there any other friendly questions, Wendy? Yeah. Thanks, Tony. Um, you, you recognise that there have been uncertainties for Linda in the last six years. So I wonder if you don't think that that wouldn't have influenced parents, um, being as we've heard from them that they would worry a lot about transition and about continuity for their children in this sort of in the coming future. Yeah. Um, I, I do agree with you, yeah. I think the uncertainty has created difficulties um, in, in, in the sense that perhaps um, parents there with their children at the school and that, and also perhaps likely parents and that. Um, that's why I'm saying to you that now it's very important that we do, you know, sort of have this full consultation, do engage everyone, whether it's people who work in, in education or the National Health Service or whatever, so that we do get it. A, a, a proper conclusion to this debate that, in my opinion, has gone on for too long. So, Chair, if I could just go to one more. Tony, I can just remember when you did become a cabinet member, and uh, we both attended the Children's Trust Board, I think probably the next morning. Um, and I remember you commenting there that you were amazed at how many special schools we all had and that it was far more than other authorities. So I do have this feeling that you've always thought we've got too many. Uh, I, I do, I'll, I'll be very honest with that. I do feel that we do have um, more special schools than most education authorities, but certainly not special schools for children with severe learning difficulties or complex learning difficulties. I think we've got, we, 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 we need the best schools for, for, for those. I think all the time, You've got to keep looking at the kind of provision you have, if it's appropriate or not. In my opinion, and I think um, the Chief Inspector um, of Ofsted, Michael Wilchow, would probably agree with me. Uh, in fact, he said it a couple of weeks ago that um, children, a lot of children who are in special schools, particularly children with um, emotional behavior difficulties or moderate learning difficulties, their needs could be better met perhaps in a mainstream school. So my thinking is, 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 is that way. I haven't, I, I, I did say that uh, because I've worked in education authorities where they've had very, very few special schools, particularly for children with moderate learning difficulty, and children with some social and emotional behavior difficulties. But in no way would I think that uh, we, we, we would have sufficient uh, I want to ensure that we have sufficient places in the very best establishments for children with profound and multiple learning difficulties. Tony, if, uh, if, I, if I were a parent, my, of, of, of a child, uh, uh, I would be concerned that the consultation, which is, you rightly say will be extremely thorough and widespread, but ultimately we will, providing elderly partners standing can pass the SEN test, we will, we will recommend that the school close in their closures and that school, those two schools, take a tour. 
But, but certainly, um, for, for me, a consultation has got to be open to so, so I would not start with that. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I, I just want to find, not, I, I, we, we, we want to ensure that um, we're not missing something that perhaps some of these reports in the past have said or not said about Lindale. So, you know, I think that, that is important, that, that Lindale is not going to, it, 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 we're not saying Lindale, um, I, I'm not coming, uh, making a prejudgment that Lindale will, 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 will close. I am saying that I want to listen to all the stakeholders out there and tell me what is the best provision for children with profound and multiple learning difficulties. Now, if if if, 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 if children, if, if the situation at Lindale, I think, which has been explained by the officers, um, because of the national funding arrangements that have come in, one of the aspects about it, and also the, 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 the numbers over the last six years, uh, for whatever reason, and the reasons might come out in the consultation. Perhaps we find out things that we didn't know, you know, that perhaps there was some things going on or not. I don't know. So that would be that would be my thinking. I'm not coming uh, with, 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 with something that's determined that these school, Ellery Park and, and, and Stanley, the children from India will go there. I'm not coming with that with, with, with that option at all. I've got any any other questions, Toby? Can I thank you for, for your time and, and contribution? Uh, as everyone else who has given uh, evidence tonight, particularly those parents with very uh, stressful uh, issues and and and, and uh, heart wrenching sort of tales of, of the, the, the predicament. However, it is now open to elected members to debate um, rather than question. Um, my, my first question is that I did say that there was an article in the uh, <laughs> in the paper about a legal challenge, um, and I just ask you, uh, as the, the you know legal advisor, uh, do you believe that the council has acted legally in, it, in its its duties, uh, you know, away from any other any other particular questions? I need to, to ask that: Is there any you believe obvious grounds for a legal challenge? No, Jay, I, I'm not uh, aware of any basis for the challenge that uh, at this point in time. I'm not familiar with the, the full arguments that may be advanced, but I'm not aware of any particular issues. Have we got more of it? Just hand up. Right. Um, 
it is. Yeah, it's on, it's on the usual procedures and so on. Okay. It, when it, co it comes to what decisions the, the uh, committee is allowed to make. Um, Say, so do you want to explain that the middle paragraph isn't relevant and wouldn't be appropriate for us to make a decision based around that particular paragraph? So, the, uh, the middle paragraph uh, relates to a decision if you consider it uh, to be outside the policy framework or contrary or not wholly in accordance with the budget. And the information evidence uh, this evening and the issues raised this evening uh, are not matched at all within that particular uh, option. So, again, as chair of the committee, there, there, there is two types of decision we can make. One is referred to referring the decision back to the cabinet member, setting out uh, in writing the nature of, of this committee's concerns, and the other is to uphold the decision uh, if the coordinate committee agrees with the initial decision. Uh, and the relevant senior officer may implement that. Uh, I've asked, we haven't made a decision yet, but I've asked Serge the question that all the evidence that we've gathered tonight and the contributions will form part of any future decision um, that is made. So it will either become part of the consultation and hopefully shape that documentation within the consultation, or if, the other, if another decision is made to refer it back, then our evidence would be part of that supporting evidence. So I, I haven't seen any other hands up for people to <coughs> engage in the debate. I have now. Okay, I should have quit while I was ahead. Uh, Alan and Leah, and then someone, I would hope someone would move, and Pat, and I hope someone would move recommendations one way or, or to that, okay? Yeah, I mean, I, I'd just like to think of, I think, uh, clearly, uh, the, the or is it, the do nothing option is just is, is not a, a valid option. Um, it, it does have to be. Um, we do need to look at Lindale School uh, in a very uh, thorough and detailed way. Um, and I accept a, a lot of what I've heard tonight about concerns about the process and about some of the the. Um,